Thanks for having me. So you don't normally as organizers speak, but sometimes things happen and you know, it's awesome. So this talk is inspired by one of my favorite people on the planet, Alex J. Vasquez. He is my mentor in a very Han Solo kind of Obi-Wan way. Um, it, because I've had very brief yet impactful moments with him, just like Luke Skywalker did, but that's not my presentation. Let's talk about time tracking. How many people in here actually track your time? Ooh, that's not about hands. Okay, so here's the thing. I came from construction accounting, and I was in construction accounting for a long, long time. And we do something called job costing. And basically, it's an autopsy that if nobody reads, they have no idea what the cause of death was. So a lot of times, it ends up being, uh, it's a method of accounting that allows you to see if a job was profitable or not. And a lot of people do it um, out of habit, but really to do job costing well, you would need to be in another talk. Um, and you would need to actually look at the results of that data and then change your estimating behavior. But so today what I wanna talk about is learning things the wrong way. So one of my alternate taglines is I do things the hard way so you don't have to. <laughs> so I was doing some side work while I was being an office manager and a social media person um, for a contractor. And so and one of my friends who was a roofer said, I need a Twitter person. And I'm like, sure, 250 a month. What do you think of that? 250 a month, quick cash, extra money. So then I then I then Bridget, the office manager, was like, hmm. How much money are you making on this 250 a month? So I started tracking my time. In, a, in an average day to handle a Twitter account well, I spend at least an hour, cumulatively. And by the way, if you do social media, okay, 100% I'm against charging for the hour, but you need to understand your hourly time commitment in order to know what your cost is, okay? So I said, well, 250 hmm, times 20, divided by, hmm. <laughs> so I kind of figured out that I was making minimum wage. <laughs> <laughs> and that is not okay. I mean, it's okay, but it's not, it wasn't okay for me. Because I, I don't want to be making minimum wage. If I was gonna do that, I'd do something way less stressful than a Twitter account for a roofer, right? So you have to just you have to figure this out. Like, sure, two fifty a month sounds great until you realize how much time you're spending on it. Then it's minimum wage, it's nine dollars an hour, basically. So I was in a talk by the now famous Alex Vasquez, and he said you have you have to you have to know that you're valuable, right? I think it was another situation where somebody dropped down and you just get in there and he's like, I don't really think that I said this, but like I typed it as he said it, so it's, we're going with it. <laughs> we price by the service, we price by the value we give, not our time. And I 100% agree with this. But if you don't know how much you cost, you don't know if you're charging in the red or the black. And we don't want red, because then your bank will not be happy with you at all. So let's talk a little bit about value. When, when we consider the, what we bring to the world or what we're doing, we can say, oh, this person did this website and it was this price and I'm doing something better so then it's that price. Well, then that's just price anchoring like Nathan Alate talked about yesterday. I, I was like, it's so funny. Just caveat, when you're reading people's names on Twitter, you don't know how they're pronunciated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I used that mispronunciation on purpose. So I didn't know if it was Nathan Alotti. Like I saw his talk in, in um, Seattle last year and I thought it was Nathan Alotti. I like that Nathan Alotti guy, Alote. That's a little different. So value, value is super subjective, right? I volunteered for a work camp. Orange County last year, and then I decided to price out just for fun. What if Orange County was my uh, client? How much would that be? Well, the market value was five thousand dollars. I didn't give them five thousand dollars, so it's super subjective. 
And if I were working at an advertising agency, that number would be higher. If I were owning a business and my billable time was higher, that would be even higher. So value is a very um, ethereal word that sometimes is difficult. It always is difficult to make tangible value. So instead, we put we assign value, um, whether it's appreciation or an in-kind partnership, a friendship. A lot of times, relationships break down between people because they don't feel valued. Normally, it means because they don't feel heard, they don't feel validated. That's not that's not a money thing. So value that's tricky, you know. And when you when you use value as your determining factor. People are often asking for a return on investment, which in accounting terms is a complete misnomer because an expense is not an investment, so therefore there's no return on it. It's an expense. An investment is something you put in like a venture capitalist and then you expect to make money back on it. An investment is putting money in the bank with a, with a certificate of deposit and getting a, a rate back. An expense, a business expense, is never an investment. So that's that's that. So let's talk about cost. Cost you know about. Cost is in your bank deposits. Cost is when you know you and I and I just want to say I'm not on my high horse. I had seven dollars in cash to my name yesterday. Like nobody's perfect in this room. So don't think, oh, I'm not as awesome as she is. Yeah, you are. You're awesome in your own ways, but this is what I've been doing for a long, long time, right? So aside from having those kinds of goals, you, if you don't really understand how much you cost, then charging $25 an hour sounds awesome. $25 an hour as an employee is completely different as $25 an hour as a freelancer. As an employee, that's like $52,000 a year. As a freelancer, well, we're going to kind of get into that. So cost is what actually happens in the bank, on FreshBooks, in Quicken, in your checkbook register. That's what cost is. It's money you're paying out. So if you don't know what your money is paying out, but, you know, just build a Google Sheet. That's, Google Sheet is awesome. So what's the difference between value and cost? Profits. <laughs> and unless you want to join the Peace Corps or whatever, that's fine. Like, I'm a capitalist. I'm not ashamed of it. I want to make money. I am not an employee for that exact reason. I finally started my own business in October because I want to be free to make as much money as I want. Right, and I don't want to sell my time. So I completely, completely am against selling your time unless it's for a very, very high price. But when you're an employee, you're selling your time. You get a lot of benefit from that, and it's a pro-con thing. If you've been in Jen's talk, you would have heard her talking about maybe you're not cut out for it. I have no problem being a remote worker because I'm super disciplined. I won't even go party with my friends until all my homework's done. <laughs> okay, so what are your monthly recurring costs? I wrote a blog post about this, so boom. I'm spending $25 a month on hosting, $20 a month on uh, Postmatic, $10 a month on Dropbox, $10 a month on Backblaze, uh, $4 a month on cloud storage, Hootsuite, $15, FreshBooks, $25, Canva, $15. There's probably other things. I just I went through my um, QuickBooks, my Quicken. I use Quicken for my computer for my real life and FreshBooks for my business life. But I just went through and looked at all my SaaS. You know, they, they, this is the cost. I This is what goes out. No matter what comes in, this is money that goes out. You know, that doesn't even include, like, the cable for the internet and uh, my cell phone bills, because I work on my cell phone. Electricity, electricity, you need electricity for the internet and your computer. And the amount I'm allowed to deduct for my home office from the IRS. Consult your CPA. I am not an accountant or giving accounting or legal advice. <laughs> so, without doing anything, breathing air, not even being super critical, not adding my car, not ask, adding mileage, or uh, my car payment, or car insurance, I'm not eating in this cost, there's nothing else happening, I'm at $710. This is going out, this money's going out like the Mississippi River, no matter what happens, right? 
So, um, but then don't I get to get paid if I'm my own business? Like, where's my pay? Well, I'll sign in health insurance, which is like $400 a month um, until I get older and then it keeps going up, but whatever, that's another talk. And so like, I'm gonna work, you know, 40 hours a week. I wanna make $75 an hour. This is just a basic amount. I charge 150 when I do consulting, so it's reasonable for my company to charge myself you know, self, what would you like to make? How about 75? Okay, that's $3,000 a month, right? So that's, that's you know, oh, that's good take on pay. It's not take on pay, so now I'm at $4,100. I haven't gotten any income yet. It's just all going out. I'm hemorrhaging over here. Like somebody sent in a cart fast. So the, I haven't even talked about my taxes. Taxes are real, yo. Like, you know, that's a thing. When you're self-employed, then you have to pay self-employment taxes. You get 1099s, that's taxable income. So it's like somewhere between 20 and 15%, whatever. In California, I'm probably like at the 50% tile level or who knows, we'll figure it out when I file my taxes in February. So then you gotta ask yourself, how much profit do you wanna make, right? So I know it cost me $4,000 to be alive, human, a life and a human in my business, breathing oxygen on this planet, paying, that's not even, like, I'm not even telling you what my rent is. That's just normal cost, basic, okay? So figure out what profit you want to make. What income do you want to be at? Because what's super cool about having your own business is if I want to work 16 hours a day, I can do it. If I want to work four hours a day, I can move to Serbia and do it. You know, I mean, like, I could be living large in Belgrade right now, and I am so thinking about it because I speak a little Serbian, so. Okay, so take your desired salary and reverse engineer your taxes. You can do that. This is what I did. So I knew what I was making when I was at my job, and I, the, the take home, okay? I used the take home because the take home is what goes in your bank. Right, so figure out what your take home is. So now I'm gonna expose myself and be super naked in front of everybody. Ready? So previously I was making 3,500 net, 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 take home. That's take home, okay? Don't base anything off of gross. That's not real life. That's not real money going in. That's only for, gross is only matters for taxes. Think about what you're really you're living on. But what I really need is 45 because Originally, my husband was uh, alive and I was getting another thousand dollars, so I knew that I needed that amount. So then, you can use uh, formulas in your Google Sheet, Excel, or whatever, Lotus 1, 2, 3, if you're still old school like that, and then reverse engineer your taxes. So, for example, if you charge $100 an hour, 20% of that's self-employment, so now you're down to 80. Now, then, then you're gonna have to pay um, income taxes and whatever like that. So if you want to be super conservative, I would use 20, 25%. I know that for me, I'm in the 15 percentile uh, tax bracket wise from the history of my tax returns, but that's not real life. That's after adjusted income and blah, 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 whatever. For me, I'd rather, my goal is, my goal, and I say goal because I haven't done this yet, but I do have an account with the Long Beach Federal Credit Union. This is going to happen. I'm going to be rat holing this money away so that I am ready for the taxes, not in trouble with the franchise tax board if you're in California. If you're not in California, you have different rules and stuff like that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, $100 is not $100. $100 is 80 if you're working in California with your self employment taxes because nobody's paying um, Social Security for you. And again, this is an estimate. I'm not a CPA. I'm not giving you tax advice. I'm not an attorney. So many disclaimers, but this talk needs to happen. How many people are blown away by this? Okay, so how many people are like, yeah, Bridget, we do this every day. Okay, so that's good. That's enough. That's, I feel good about that. Like, I don't want you too blown away, but like, a little bit of eyes opening here. So like, yeah, I need $9,000 of billable to make what I want, which is 49. Right? So that means I'm about 67% of the way, and that's why I have a part-time job. So it's okay. I started my business, had like half my clients, 
You know what? I wasn't making it. Do I quit? No, because I'm saying yes to myself. Yes to myself, go get a part-time job. So I can do all this work on the weekend, whatever I want, because all I need is Wi-Fi and the internet. That's what's so great about being in the WordPress community, being uh, able to work in online, is that you have so much freedom, not just with your physical space, but where you live, how you want to live, what you want to do. You have to decide what your own constructs are, and then make those rules, and then live by them. But you still have to be disciplined in whichever way that you choose, right? So I was a remote worker, and then, um, and then I had a fork in my life. Forks are a good thing, not just for software. You have a choice, you're looking down two roads, you know, diverged in yellow wood. And being one traveler along, I stood and looked down one as far as I could until it bent into the undergrowth. So Robert Frost is talking about projecting. You know, whether it's financial projection or projection based upon behavior or for me, the reason why I wanted to be a remote worker is because my husband was very ill and I knew I needed to be home, not driving to Santa Ana 27 miles away, sitting on the five, uh, you know. I, was, I figured out that in 14 years of working in Santa Ana from Dana Point, I lost three years of my life. Yeah. Don't do math unless you want to look in the face and then, like, the thing with math, this is what I love about math. Math tells you the truth. Don't be afraid of it. Just let it guide you. And so I said, you know what? I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm wasting so much of my life that I'm never going to get back. And so I, I worked 16 hour days doing side work until I had my career. And I worked for an advertising agency. And in October, I started my own business. And I knew what the market would support, and so I started doing my pricing. Not 250, 1200, right? So you have to, you can put your prices out there and you can fiddle with them and you can experiment, you know why? Because your website's in WordPress. It's super easy to change numbers. It doesn't matter. The only thing that I will tell you that I learned, this is not really part of this talk, but I will tell you anyway. <laughs> I learned the hard way already Something from construction, which I should have put in my proposals. Estimate is good for 30 days. Because I got stuck in some pricing I gave away in February. <laughs> right? So you can learn the hard way, you can learn the easy way. I'm super good at learning the hard way. So that's my tip for you. Okay, so then another way you can skin this cat is dividing your cost by 40 hours, marking it by 25%, and then, then when you estimate your time for a job, this website will take me, this account will take me this amount of time. And you, listen, nobody has time to track your time all day long. You can put a thing on your computer or whatever. It doesn't know when you went to the bathroom. You gotta round this stuff up. You don't need to be like, you know, justin.tv having something film me around all the time just so that you know what you're doing. Just take an average job and just say, okay, I'm gonna see how much time I'm spending today. And then extrapolate it out. Like, that's what's so great about math. You know, you don't have to be counting every day, but you should have some kind of general idea of what you're doing. Or you can just write it down. Like, I have a paper calendar on my desk, and I write stuff down. Oh, I had a call with this person, 1.5 hours. Hmm, maybe I need to add in meetings to this price. Next estimate does not include meetings or includes two hours of my client consultation, right? So you can learn through this. Iteration is something we learn in software development. Iteration is something we learn in life. Change, adapt, grow, evolve. You're not stuck. You have choices. It's your business. You can do whatever you want. Or as I say, you're a grown-ass adult. So when I did this, the cost was 4100 Divided by 40, it's $102. That's $102 an hour if I only work 40 hours a week. Now, I'm willing to work more, but this is my goal. I don't really want to work more than 40 hours a week. Do you want to work more than 40 hours a week? Who in here wants to work more than 40 hours a week? Who wants to work less than 40 hours a week? Who wants to go to Tahiti, Bali, Thailand, uh, Yugoslavia, oh sorry, Serbia, Paris, Croatia, like, South Africa for the World Cup. You know what I'm saying? You want freedom. This is why you have a job you do on a computer that only needs the internet. And so you can buy a little thing that lets you have the internet too. Like it's 
It's so amazing. We're living, we're living in my childhood dream of the Jetsons. <laughs> we video chat to ad nauseum, right? We, we have Slack. We have so many ways to communicate with each other. We can do our work wherever we want. But you need to know how much you cost yourself. So now that's the baseline. That's your baseline. Your cost is your baseline value. So I should never charge anything less than $128 an hour when I'm making up my proposals, right? Based upon this math. I don't like hypotheticals. I don't think they're useful. So, sorry, that's what I did. Whatever you guys think of me, you can find me on Twitter at YouTube can be guru. No A, because I won't let me have 16 characters. Um, so the thing is, that's just the base. So when I do hourly consulting, I charge 150. And I know that WePay and PayPal are gonna take their 2.9% and 30 cents. Mm -hmm. Factor that in. You know, if you're like, don't get all mad that you only got $143. Figure it out, we have the internet, we have math. Every payment gateway is 2.9%. And 30 cents or something like that. Round it up to 3% and put it in your pricing. This is what the whole world does. <laughs> the, the consumer pays for everything, no business pays for anything. Unless you're not pricing it correctly, don't do that. And if you did it before, that's fine, just change it. So for me, my biggest client uh, was before I changed my price to 1200. So I changed their invoice to say 1200 with a line item that's a discount of negative 200 for legacy pricing. Psychology and math is marketing. <laughs> Psychology and math is marketing, okay? So there's more than one way to find your value. You can reverse engineer things, you can fiddle around, you can test it out, but you know, you don't want to watch the water boil either. Like nobody's going to sit around looking at Google Analytics going, oh good, somebody else came from Russia. This is super exciting. <laughs> I mean, okay, so I may have done that. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do on Google Analytics is lie right now. Like, oh my gosh, there's another one. But 20 hits a day is like a revival for me. So I want to know who's going to start a Google Sheet on Monday. That's not enough hands. I'm gonna tweet all of you guys. I know your handles. I don't. Uh, so that's basically what I want you to understand is that I hope that nobody in this room is charging under $100 an hour. And, and you don't have to tell your client what that is, but when you estimate your job, if you think, okay, this website is gonna take five hours, okay? So that's $500, but what if you're using Beaver Builder? Now it's six. What if you have hosting? Now it's six and $25 or 30 or 100. So now it's $700. Where's your profit in there? So now it's 867 because that's like a Walmart strategy. The other thing I do is I'm prepaid. I don't do any work until I get paid. So that's another thing you can do because once you release that product, it's there in the sky. You know what I mean? So, but, you, but when you're in your brain, you gotta go, okay, so sometimes I do lost leaders, right? So sometimes I go, I know I can't make money on this, but I can get a new customer. So I really want this for 50, but if I do this for 25, and I get 15 of those, then I'll get some more people. Because as my late husband's grandpa used to say in the depression, a fast nickel beats a slow dime. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's true. I'm telling, I'm telling you, like, every time I go on Twitter and say, well, if you want to blah, 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 I'll do it for this price, only until this day, boom, DM, 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 DM. You know what I mean? So, but I know what my cost is. I can make that decision because I'm a grown-ass adult. It's my business. Somebody told me once when I gave a proposal, oh, I don't think you should discount me that much. I go, you don't get to tell me what to do. <laughs> if I want to give you 50% off, I can give you 50%. It's my business. I make the decisions. He goes, okay, okay, I'll pay it. <laughs> you know, but that's the thing. We wanted this freedom. We wanted it for our, a reason, right? So I would like to take questions now. Well, I think you know. Yes, sir. How do you normally factor in your deductions for your business? 
How do I normally factor my deductions? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know what my cost is. I know it costs me this much money a month. That's my net. That's how I factored in. So I factored in how much it is, and then I divided it so that's what my hourly rate is. I'm sorry, I meant for at the, at the end of the year tax returns. Because I know you get deductions for investing in your business. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm not a tax attorney. I, I know that you can figure, figure, uh, fill out schedule whatever. I just go to hnrblock.com and I do what they say. Oh, but my question is, do you normally take those into consideration when you're figuring out your costs? No, because that's, that's a refund. Okay. That, I'm talking about money that's going in and out of your bank today. Because okay. if you do that, you're going to be screwed. Because what if they change the rules? Or what if you don't have a receipt? Or what if now you're getting audited because you're taking yourself out to lunch, not Alex Vasquez out to lunch, and talking about web development, and they did write it down. You know, it depends on how conservative you are with your deductions. So I, for me, I'm gonna be super conservative. I'd rather have money back, for sure. And uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather have more money in my bank account. And that is because um, I have known people with a history of IRS problems, including my husband, late husband, who went into business with somebody who factored the receivables. Never factor your receivables. That's selling your customers money uh, that they owe you for a price. And then, and then he did, had a couple of bank accounts and stole $350,000 and because he wasn't uh, depositing the payroll checks, the payroll taxes. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can factor that in. You can be, you don't have to do what I said. This is a guide. What my, my thing to you is, if you want to factor that in, factor that in. But if you're wrong, you don't have the money right. in April. Or well, actually, well, it depends on if you're a corporation. But yeah, I mean, and really, I think we're all supposed to be filing quarterly, but I haven't started doing that yet. Don't rat me out, yo. Know? <laughs> just a follow up how do you personally manage your end of the year deductions? Is there a, uh, like a system you follow? I started my business in October. <laughs> I haven't had a year of being BridgetWillard.com yet. <laughs> but I have a lot of years of doing accounting. She works with a tax That's professional to figure it out for her. I go to hrblock.com and I do what they say. So when I did it last year, they said that's a hobby. It's not enough income to count. And that's what my CPA said before. So I'm just gonna fill out whatever they do and say, I'd rather have the money than not have the money. I'm gonna be in trouble in April if I don't have that money. But yeah, I'm gonna deduct as much as I can. I know, because I looked it up, that I can deduct $350 off my rent. Because it's about the square footage and stuff. Mm. But I'm adding that cost in there. Because that's a cost to me, even if I'm not paying it out. Right. So it depends on how conservative you wanna be. Sorry, I hate it, it, it depends. Maybe hit me up on Twitter in on February, because that's when I'm gonna do my taxes. Have you ever had any pushback from clients when you say you want to prepay for them? Oh, if they don't like it, they're not going to be my client. Okay. So for me, I do social media posting and blogging. Not so much blogging, I really want them to hire Jen. I hate writing. <laughs> uh, but I will do some, um, I don't make money at it. You got to know what you make money at. I don't, make, I don't pump, pump them out like that. She's a machine, she has a whole infrastructure, okay? Not a paid promotion. But that's what I'm saying, like you know who you know who your resources are. I make money doing Twitter. I make money doing Twitter for WordPress businesses because I know the community, I know exactly who the audience is, and I niched out, right? But I started doing uh, an account for uh, somebody outside of it, and I sent the invoice early because I'm going on vacation in Puerto Rico tomorrow. And she's like, well, I'm not gonna pay this yet. I'm like, you can pay it whatever you want, but I'm, my work's done, right? But if they don't pay, I don't do the work, I stop. And that's what, how we work an advertising agency, and that, those are my terms. And I put it on my proposal, prepaid monthly, no refunds, full or partial months. I'm not refunding you, because I did the work. You don't like the work, not my problem. Because for me, the way I do it is I deliver um, a spreadsheet twice a month with um, content that's written, they approve it, and then I schedule it. So no, no refunds, full or partial months, prepaid. So the invoice, I do nothing until that invoice is paid. When FreshBooks emails me, then I start working. Otherwise I don't care, it's not real. 
Yes. You know what? This is a whole like counting chickens before they hatch thing. I've done that too much emotionally. I sent a tweet out the other day. It's like dating and client acquisition takes an unsustainable amount of hope and optimism. And those are two things that I've been doing for like a year, right? So like you can think somebody's a lead, but they're only a lead when they pay. Like it doesn't matter. You can keep everybody as like in your bumble and keep them active, all those matches, and then, but if they don't talk to you, it's not really happening, is it? It only matters if you actually go on a date. It only matters if they actually pay you. This doesn't mean you have to ride them out. I would just say, you know what, maybe it's not a good match. I did, I did that on a first date, too. He said, blah, 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 and I was like, whatever, and then it was super awkward, and I was like, this guy's killing me, he's so boring, I wanna kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> So I went to the bathroom and I texted one of my friends and they said, just end it, just say goodbye. I'm like, that's rude, that's not, that doesn't fit my brand, right, because I'm a marketer. So I went back and I said, you know what? You're a really good person, I like you, but there is nothing happening here. And so, cheers for trying, I got my, got my glass. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, oh, we could have been at Netflix, like the rest of the world, not even trying to date, but we're the brave ones. And he was like, yeah. We are. And so he, he walked out there with his head and held eyes and shoulders back and like, boom, mm, get some, you know? That's a code of kind, whatever, get clients. Okay, so that's what I'm saying is like, you can end things well. It does, we don't have to be a match. I don't have to work with you. You don't have to work with me. It just is okay. But don't, don't say no to yourself by making, by like throwing some number out of the sky like the magic Karanik or Karnak or whatever, what? Karnak. Karnak, thank you. Magic Karnak, just saying, oh, I'll do that for $450, and you're like, oh my god, there's so many emails at 11 o'clock at night. Do we have any more mas preguntas? Yes, ma'am. Can you please give that prepaid lingo again? Oh, my prepaid lingo is, uh, I have the scope, and I say prepaid monthly, for full or partial months, no refunds. It's in the terms part. I love fresh books so hard. It's the easiest thing. Oh, I will tell you what not to do really quick, just on that. So don't make an estimate, don't convert an estimate into an invoice while you're still on the phone with the client. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes being efficient is a bad thing. She's like, you just send me an invoice. I'm like, you're welcome. She goes, well, isn't that a little too soon? I'm like, no, I'm just thinking about it now. I get it done now as a secretary for 30 years. I can get stuff done. <laughs> just, well, I find it very off-putting. I'm like, okay, well, you can pay it whenever you want, but my work is done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy to answer any questions about whatever. Yes, Joseph. I mean, you kind of answered this already, but there's I, will, I always have the issue with scope creep. You mentioned scope with your with your contract. But sometimes scope creep is one of those things that sort of just creeps up on you, and before you know, it's like 25% of the project. Okay, scope creep. Yeah. How do you keep scope creep from? That is literally happening to me right time? now. That's literally happening to me right now. Was it my question? I'm sorry. That, that was kind of creepy. <laughs> I love puns so hard. So what do you think about scope creep? Okay, so recognize the signs. Uh -huh. So I made, because I was in construction, I made my proposal very clear. $350 for posting on Instagram, content and captions to be supplied by others, right? Three to four posts per week, prepaid monthly for full or partial months, no refunds, right? And so all of a sudden, she's emailing me all the time with, with somebody else, and then I'm like, okay, so, I have some options. I can be, you know, on my phone going, oh my gosh, da 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 da, something, 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 blah, 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 while I'm drinking tequila with my friends, <laughs> or um, I can say, you know what, this is not acceptable. I would not let anybody else. <laughs> I would not let anybody else do that. <laughs> so why would I let this client do that? This is not okay. And after cussing in several languages all around my apartment, I said, you know what, Napoleon didn't, um, 
Maybe it's a bad example, but I liked that he didn't deal with stuff, right? You, you never answer anything when somebody's mad. You do not email somebody when they're mad. Don't email somebody when you're mad. So there's a, like a biofeedback thing. And when my hair starts getting mad, like, whose hair gets mad? Is it just Mickey? Okay, thanks. When my hair is like, oh, I'm so mad, like, oh, yeah, we'll take, you know, like, you're just like, oh. I, I can't even right now. I'm just so like, oh, I can feel it in my, like just even mimicking it, I can feel it in my face, my chest is constricting. Do not, do not open your computer. So I calmed down and then I came back to and I said, I waited, it was inefficient, which is my worst quality, I like to be efficient. I waited until 9 a.m. and I went point by point and answered her concerns and I said, thank you for da 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 da. I will be happy to email you between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. I'll do it all weekend long, but it's going to be 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So she sends me emails now. She goes, you don't have to reply right now. But that's fine for her. If she wants to be up at 10, 11, 1 o'clock in the morning working. She has her own business. She can do what she wants. This her, she's a grown ass adult too, right? <laughs> but I choose what I do. It's my business and I am not responding and she can't make me. She doesn't want it, she can quit me. Guess what? Full or partial months, baby, no refunds. <laughs> I don't care. I will pay her to not be my client if that's a problem. I'm not living my life that way. That's why I'm not somebody's employee anymore. It's not okay to just count. You know, and then I have a part-time job and I only get paid when I'm there, but I noticed their website was down. So that's part of my brand is I can choose to reach out to the website company and say there is some kind of DNS help happening right now and they asked for the password and yes, I'm one of those people that emails it and I don't care. And so we did it and it got fixed and that's fine. And I was here at work camp and I wasn't getting paid for it and that's fine. I chose to do that, that's my choice. But you don't get to tell me what to do. And when you realize you don't have to do it, you have the power. They don't like it, they can find somebody else. There's like 300 people who do this work right here, right now. Does that answer your question? It did, that was a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> really, no more questions? I thought this would be more controversial. I was expecting like an effigy and a bonfire. <laughs> which, no? accounting, which accounting services do you use? Or the I use freshbooks.com. Okay. I use Quick, Quicken on my house computer for my, just pulls down Chase, you know? And, um, and the, like whatever, I pretty much pay attention to it, but whatever cash flow is a whole other talk. Like really, you should have more money in your bank and stop spending it on tequila. You know, that's another question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Do you still have the, um, the roofer guy and did you figure out a way to raise rates? I do not have him. So this is the thing, like, when, I know, right? <laughs> so he, he is one of those people that said, this isn't working. I tried it. And um, that's fine. So, um, like I said, when I have the, one of the clients I have is on a lower rate, not that rate. But what I started doing when I raised my rates is showing them on their invoice that they're getting a discount from, for legacy pricing. One of the biggest mistakes you can make as a person mm -hmm. or as a giant brand, whether you're a web host <coughs> or <coughs> somebody, <laughs> With licenses is to be, say you have grandfather pricing and then going back on it because that's not returning loyalty to your customers. Mm -hmm. That is a huge marketing problem, a huge branding problem, and you have to decide to live with yourself. So, you know, you can break up with somebody if you want. You can say, you know, I don't want to do this anymore, but let me help you find somebody else. That's actually how I got my Instagram client. And I kind of know why I know, but like, thanks for the heads up, lady. Um, so that's, that's what happens. It's like you, for me, it's about integrity. I want to look at myself in the mirror in the morning and be like, no, that was the right thing to do. They agreed to that and so did I. If I made a mistake, that's not their problem. I made the mistake. 
Those are my boundaries that I didn't set up properly, whether it's pricing or responding to text messages at 10 o'clock at night. And then I just complain about it on Snapchat. Don't complain about it on Twitter. Just complain about it to your friends in person. <laughs> it, no, seriously, like you need to talk to your friends, but do not client shame on Twitter. Uh, we have 10 more minutes, so we have time for questions. Are there any what? other services or like online programs or anything that you suggest to use for your consulting business or for marketing your business? Oh, yeah. Well, I have a list of SaaS kind of right here. So I use um, I use Managed Hosting Festival. Sorry, Matt, but they are my client. Um, uh, Postmatic is a comment delivery plugin. Um, they so like when I send my write my blogs, I don't need to do Mailchimp because it just emails it to them. I'm not doing a bunch of work. It's just me. There's no like minions. Uh, Dropbox, I love so hard. I love Dropbox so hard. All my website backs backups go there. Um, my phone backs up to Google uh, Photos, Dropbox, and to um, Apple Photos, so all the time. And um, for Dropbox, it's so great with clients. Um, it's really easy to share files that way, but I pay for the whatever, un basically unlimited amount of storage. Backblaze is for backing up my computers, the actual machines, and it's um, $10 for, doesn't matter how many computers you have. Um, iTunes, I do their cloud storage also because I want, if something happens to my phone, I do, I work on this a lot. So, because um, I'm, I'm doing Twitter and um, Facebook for clients, so I need my phone. I'm, I check it all my waking hours, you know? Um, unless I'm in a conversation with somebody, then I'm not doing that, that's rude. Um, so, uh, I want to be able to just get another iPhone and have everything on it. Um, Hootsuite is a social media management tool. I only use it for Twitter, but I have I use it for clients. It's free up to three accounts, but what I like about Hootsuite is the, when you add lists to it, oh my gosh, that's a whole other talk, bridgewillow.com slash Twitter lists. Twitter lists will save your life, that's another talk. But Hootsuite lets you put your lists in there, and then it's the same on a desktop or on the web app or whatever you call it when you use the internet on your computer. I think it's what's, whatever SAS. When you go to the URL, hootsuite.com, and you log in, it's the same as the app on your phone. And I love that because it's, and I also can do old school retweets, which if you've seen the retweets for WordCamp Los Angeles, that's, I use that to do that. Uh, FreshBooks. FreshBooks, I love FreshBooks so much. Um, it's made my life completely easy. Canva.com is for making graphics because, you know, I'm not a graphic designer. I don't even know how to use Adobe Photo, Illustrator, whatever, um, or InDesign or anything like that. And I'm not going to. If I have to do that, I need to hire somebody else as a vendor. Um, but if I just need a blog graphic that's 1200 by 628 for my own website, boom, it's done, whatever. Um, I'm thinking about getting the paid version of Calendly, which is another service I learned from JenMiller.com over here. Oh, do you have JenMiller.com? No. You should. That's it's Jen Miller blog. Okay. Jen Miller over here if you need someone to blog their com. Anyway, so she uses a lot of those kinds of things, but Calendly is a scheduling tool because I have clients in lots of different time zones, including you know India, Europe, whatever. Somebody wants to video chat with you, and I have to block out my time that I'm at my part-time job, so they can just look and see what you're available, and then schedule, and it's a lot easier than going back and forth. How about Thursday at three? Oh, I can't do th Thursday at three, so I'll still be driving. How about Thursday at three, three? Oh, I can't do that, I'm gonna be at PTA. Well, how about, like, that stuff is time waste. I don't have time for that crap. You know, nobody has time for that crap. Any more questions? Alex? Hi, I'm Alex. Hi, Alex. <laughs> so that was a fantastic talk. Um, so how do you how do you handle uh, conversations with folks, colleagues, uh, people who know who you are, their friends, or, you know, they're just people who do similar lines of work, and they're like, hey, Bridget, I'd love to work with you. You know, since we're such good friends, you know, what about a 
discount? Like, how do you how do you uh -huh. gracefully handle those conversations? How do you gracefully handle discount requests from your friends? So your friends should want to pay your full prices. I'm just going to say that. Um, but I have friends that I do that for, um, and I offer the price. One of my clients. Um, discontinued for a while, and I said, I don't like this. I don't, I mean, I, we, we made a trial agreement. So I said, what if, what if you do this for three months? You don't like it, you walk away, we're still friends, it's great, right? And then it's no hard feelings, right? Because everybody has to, to make their own business decisions. Um, and some people I'm like, you know what? I, I believe in you, I really want to help you out. So I have published prices for the gen pop, right? So it's my business, I can do this. So what I did was I said, I finally emailed him, I go, I, it breaks my heart that you're not doing this. Let's talk about a price point that works for you because I believe in your product and I want it to help you. And I offered to give the discount. It's severely discounted, but I believe in that person, I believe in his business, and I believe in the product. And I'm a grown ass woman, it's my business. I can do whatever I want. But if somebody asks, Oh, Bridget, I really want you to do this, but I need 50% off. I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I can sharpen my pencil, but I don't know. I need to come back, because uh, that's what they say in construction. Go sharpen your pencil. Uh, it's such a weird, weird comment. <laughs> Whatever. So I go, I'm going to sharpen my pencil. I go, no, I just can't do that. Because at this, sometimes when you're at the beginning of your career, like people say, how do I get clients? A lot of times you're doing it as a loss leader or for free to get exposure like you can't pay for your rent with exposure but that referral base matters right and you can decide if this person is my friend they want help but really so there's two sides to that Alex it's like your friend should pay you full price but also you can work on a deal like I have agency pricing that I don't publish because like for example if if you wanted me to do something, it's not going to be the prices on my website because I don't have to deal with the client, so you get a different price. And it's not going to be on the internet because you should mark it up. I believe in markup. You know what I mean? So like, I think that the way you handle the conversations by being honest, it's managing expectations. You go, oh, I really want you to do your twelve hundred dollar level, but I want you to do it for four. And I'm like, mm, I can't do that. But if you're really hurting, you can make that financial decision too. And you can do it with a time. Like, what if we did that for three months and then we evaluate? Then you can decide. You know, it depends. But if somebody's like really hounding you, you can tell them to pick a finger and give them 10 to choose from. <laughs> In a nice way, of course. Because you wouldn't do that because you're a professional. But uh, it's funnier and we're tired. It's bird camp. So well, I can take one more question, Jamal. Do you have a system or a schedule on how you use your 40, 40 hours a week? Do I have a schedule on how I use my time, my, my 40 designated hours, 40 hours? Three, three days full time and then all the day? Oh, no. So I'm just so routine oriented. I basically work 8 to 5. Some, I mean, when I wake up in the morning, I look at Twitter and drink my coffee. And then I do that at night. But when I do my work work, I know myself. My best hours, the most productive hours I have are between nine and three, and I, I learned that from a long time ago doing office work. So I was a little nervous about giving a, a talk on accounting at 3.30. Oh. Because even with all the sleep in the world, which is why I skipped, I skipped the after party yesterday, this is not my best time to talk about numbers. Like, I don't do math in my head. Like, all of a sudden, I didn't tutor algebra for 10 years. I'm super stupid. So, like, know yourself, right? But I get a second win at 7.30 p.m. So if I need to do more work, I'll come home. I work at my desk in my living room. I do not work in my bedroom unless I am super exhausted. That is a work-life balance thing and another talk. But I, I work from eight to five. Every day. Every day. But, and my friends say, when are you going to work? I, I am working. Well, so that's my bigger problem. So like a better question is, how do you tell your friends who are stay-at-home moms or have regular jobs so you can't go to lunch with them during the week? You know what, I had, had that problem. It's a real problem in my friendship. 
because they don't get it. And I said, listen, I'm, I'm going to say this to you in a way you can understand. I can go to lunch with you on Saturday. That's when people go to three-hour lunches. I am working. Well, you work from home. Still working. Yeah. It's my job. Well, that's not a real job. Yeah, it is. It's a real job. It's really paying the rent. It's for real. And there's my costs. I just told you what they are. You, you want to pay me $150 an hour to go to lunch with you for three hours? Let's do it. I will send you a PayPal link. You can pay me. And after you pay me, we will make the appointment for lunch. Because that's how I do business consulting. Thank you, guys.